Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the horror series. Hope you're all enjoying it so far. Uh, this time around, we're going to do quite a big uh, topic. Uh, we're going to create our monster or our, our character that's going to be running around chasing us. Uh, so there's a few things we need to do because we are going to be using AI. We're going to be using behavior trees. Uh, so in our content browser, if we go down, we can create a new... Uh, folder within our blueprint folder. We just call this AI for now. Um, there's a few things we're going to need to create. We're going to need to right click and go into our artificial intelligence. We're going to have to create a behavior tree. So we'll call this BT underscore AI. And we're going to call another one uh, a blackboard, which is going to give BB underscore AI. Uh, and then we're going to need to create our actual character itself. So if we go to Blueprint, and we're going to create a character, and we're just going to call this BP underscore uh, enemy character. And then Control, Shift, and S to save everything. Under our BT AI, we want to drop this down and make sure the Blackboard asset is BB AI, because that means that we are using our one we've just created. Uh, so that's fine, and in our, let's just close these down, uh, and in our BP enemy character, uh, we need to create an AI controller for him. So if we scroll down, we have pawn information, we change it all to possess to uh, placed in world or spawned, and we need to choose a create a new AI controller for this character. So in the content browser, we're going to go new blueprint class, AI controller, and we'll call this uh, AI con, and then controller. So in here, we can choose AI con underscore controller. We're going to use the, so we are playing as Quinn, so we're going to use Manny. As our mesh. I'm going to have to drop him down and we're going to have to rotate him. We we'll use the ABP Many Animation Blueprint, so he is not just T posing, and then we can drag him into the world. And here we have our character. One uh, prerequisite that we will need uh, before we can get him moving around and running around our scene is we are going to need to use a nav, mef, nav mesh modifier. Uh, so if you're in the place actors tab under volumes, halfway down you have a nav mesh bounds volume. Drag that in and if you press the P button you can visualize uh, the nav mesh. So if we just scale this up. So it covers the entire map. So now he can run anywhere that's here and that's in the green. So he's got a nice big path to follow everywhere. Press P again just to hide that. Next up, now we have our character. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to uh, start build, working on the AI tree. So in AI tree, we're going to need to grab a selector, which we will be choosing what mode this AI is going to be doing, if it's going to be uh, searching for us or it's going to be chasing us. So the first thing is we're going to do a sequence, and we're going to rename this sequence. Uh, searching, and we're going to do the exact same thing again, uh, but this time it's going to be chasing. Now 
what we're going to want the AI to do when it's searching for us is we want it to run to a random location and then it's going to stop and basically look around see if, if it finds us uh, and if it doesn't it's going to carry on going so we're going to need to create a new task and we're going to call this BT task uh, random, run to random location The event we're going to need is event receive execute AI. We want to get a random reachable uh, location and navigable, navig navigable radius. We want to grab the controlled pawn and we want to get actor location. And we want to add the radius to somewhere. Uh, let's, let's do 2000. Nice and nice and far. From the random location, we want an AI move to. And grab our pawn, put that in there. And then on success, we can drag off and go finish execute with success, and finish execute with no success on fail. Compile and save. Then, then we can drag down BT task run to random location and on the right hand side we can have it wait for let's say just one second so we can test. So now everything's done apart from we need to set up this AI controller to use that blackboard and this behavior tree. And to do this, what we need to do is we need to go into our AI controller. And all we need to do is we need to tell it to run behavior tree and we will choose that behavior tree that we've got. So as you can see, uh, our enemy, if I push a semicolon, uh, our enemy is now running around the map. Uh, I'll say running, he's sliding across the map because we need to give him some animations. Uh, and he is very fast and very snappy. So we need to make some changes to his character movement because obviously we are quite slow ourselves. So in our enemy character blueprint, if we tick uh, orient rotation of the movement, then it will rotate at a certain rate. Uh, and we should also change his walk speed down from 600 to around, uh, how fast do we run? We walk at 200, let's up ours to 250, and we lower the enemies down to, to 225. So now, you can see he's walking. Much slower. Uh, we might need to change the orientation speed. Let's put that down to maybe 180. still a bit snappy we'll have to come back and fix that uh, but now he's moving slowly which is the main thing uh, so we need to create a animation blueprint now for our AI so if we go into animation and animation blueprint and we want it for the skeleton, which is this one. And we're going to call this ABP underscore enemy character. Because we're going to need uh, more than just the walking, which we can all add into this one. We're going to need to create a walking to running blend. Uh, so if we go to animations. And in Legacy, there is Blend Space 1D. So if we call this Blend Space Walk uh, Walk Run, and open it up, add velocity to our horizontal function. So 
So under our, under our horizontal axis, we can label that as speed, and we want 0 to 500. And then we, what we can do is we can have idle as up to 0. We can have walk forward to 125. Or let's do this up to 225. And we can have run at 500. So now we have our animation set, but we need to tell our output to do that. So what we need to do is we need to uh, grab our blend space. And drag that into there, and now we need our speed. Uh, now we need to just grab our speed, and so we promote that to a variable, and we just need to find how to get our speed variable now. So if you go into the event graph, try to get pull on owner, we cast two in the our BP enemy character. We can get our velocity vector length. Which adds our, which basically gets our velocity in a float, and we can grab our speed and set it there. Add blueprint begin play, and uh, we shall set that to a variable so we don't cast every frame. And then in our enemy character, we can change our blueprint to enemy character. We did get an error there, so I'm just going to go straight into try get pawn owner into get velocity, which also works without any casting. Now we have an enemy character that just walks around. One last thing we need to do is if we go into our walk space and we grab this point here, it's MM walk forward. And exactly what we did for our character, we need to add a new notify, play sound, footprints. And finally, we need to do exactly the same thing again, but on the run. So now as he walks away, the uh, footsteps get quieter and quieter. <coughs> okay guys, that is the end of this episode. That is a 
massive uh, next step for this one, uh, where we now have an enemy that can run after you. Uh, next next episode, we're going to be doing it so he can actually see us, uh, and we'll move on from there. But we're getting slowly through this, uh, but just in time for spooky season. Hope you like you guys are enjoying this series. If you do like it, hit subscribe. We're getting close to a magic 500 number now. Uh, if we hit 500, I will be doing a public game jam on itch.io, uh, which I hope any all of you will be interested in joining in. Uh, I will be releasing any more details closer to the time. But uh, in the meantime, thank you guys for watching. I shall see you next time.